When atoms share their valence electrons equally, they form nonpolar covalent bonds, as in the hydrogen and methane gas molecules shown here. In water, the oxygen atom is much larger than the hydrogen atoms. Oxygen's larger nucleus thus draws the electrons from the hydrogen atoms more closely to its nucleus. The result is the oxygen acquires a partial negative charge. Each hydrogen, left with only its proton, has a partial positive charge. There we go. The Greek letter delta is used to indicate partial charge. Because of their partial charges, water molecules attract one another and come together as shown here. The interactions between water molecules results in the formation of hydrogen bonds. The millions of H bonds holding together a drop of water accounts for water's high cohesion, in fact the tendency of water to stay liquid at normal temperatures. And here it is. In the same way, there is strength in numbers in the millions of hydrogen bonds holding two strands of DNA together in a double helix. Remember also that water is a good solvent. It can attract other polar covalent substances, as shown on the left, or charged surfaces of macromolecules like a protein, as seen on the right. Proteins that attract water like this are called hydrophilic or water-loving. Many ionic compounds are readily soluble in water. Here, as a reminder, is NaCl, or sodium chloride, formed by the ionization of sodium to Na+, which gives up an electron, and of chlorine to chloride, which accepts an electron, the one lost by sodium. The Na+, and Cl- ions form ionic bonds in a regular array to form salt crystals like the one illustrated here. When added to water, the partial charges on the hydrogens and oxygens in the water are powerful enough to bind the chloride and sodium ions respectively, pulling the salt crystal apart and dissolving it, as illustrated on this slide. From your chemistry courses, you may remember that not all salts are equally soluble.